IGOanalyst Notebook 10 is now available from i2 Group and is the first release of Analyst Notebook to be made available in 64-bit. The product is still the great Analyst Notebook you love, but starting today there are a few things you need to know about getting started with the product. Analyst Notebook 10 now requires you to provide the product with a software license in order to use the product. Some clients may be familiar already with parts of this licensing model, as it uses some of the same technology as the previously optional product access management software, sometimes called PAM. In order to give you flexibility in licensing the product, there are many different ways to license Analyst Notebook version 10 depending on what type of client you are, and it's important for you to choose the right method for you and your organization before moving forward. Let's have a look at the three different licensing options that you have available to choose from. The three different options available are standard loan licensing, network licensing, and internet licensing. Note that by default at this release, if you're a business partner, you will be limited to standalone licensing. If you're one of our business partners who has a good business case for using a different form of licensing, for example, you're a support providing partner, please get in touch with i2 product support who will take care of you. Let's take a quick look at the different licensing models in detail. Standalone. Standalone licensing takes a license for Analyst Notebook and permanently ties it to a specific machine. Clients with very few Analyst Notebook licenses or users will likely want to consider using this simple to use licensing model. However, we wouldn't recommend this licensing model for clients with a very large number of users or concurrent users. Tying a standalone license to a machine is very quick and easy, but be aware that at this release, once a license has been tied to a machine, it cannot be moved to another machine without reaching out to I2 support. If you need to move a standalone license from one machine to another, please do get in touch. Internet licensing. Internet licensing, as the name suggests, requires an internet connection and allows Analyst Notebook to reach out to I2's Entitlement Management System, or EMS for short, to check for license availability without clients needing to host their own internal license server. Clients can generate temporary registration tokens from within their own view of the I2 EMS portal and then provide those tokens to end users, allowing them to authenticate their copies of Analyst Notebook directly with the cloud-based EMS portal. This means it's not necessary for a license server to then be deployed locally. Internet licensing is obviously not recommended for clients who work frequently without access to the internet or have no access to the internet. Network licensing. Network licensing is the most flexible licensing model and some clients may have some familiarity with this method if they've previously used or investigated the product access management features of i2. In network licensing, you install a licensing server somewhere within your organization which can be accessed by all your end users. Once the license server is installed, you generate your licenses from within the EMS portal and then apply them to your local license server. Then your end users select to point their installations of Analyst Notebook to that local license server. An Analyst Notebook will then check for a license at that location each time it starts. This method gives the client the greatest flexibility over their licenses. Licenses can be reserved for specific individuals or groups, are not tied to specific machines, can be borrowed for use offline away from the local license server, and is particularly useful for clients that may have many end users but users that do not concurrently use the software. Please see our extended licensing documentation available on our website for more information on choosing your licensing model deployment. Now let's have a look at the different ways in which you license the software from a client's point of view. First, let's have a look at what you'll receive from i2 when you purchase i2 Analyst Notebook. When purchasing i2 software which uses the new licensing model, for example Analyst Notebook, you will then be sent an email containing the details about the products which you've purchased. Your email address, which you receive this email from, will be set as an admin account. The most important thing within this email is your Entitlement Identifier, or EID, which will also be contained within the email. Your EID is your unique identifier that entitles you to the copy or copies of Analyst Notebook which you've purchased. Now let's have a look at Analyst Notebook. As you can see, when installing Analyst Notebook, the installer will now prompt you to agree that you will license Analyst Notebook before you're able to continue installing. It's important to note at this release of Analyst Notebook version 10 that no versions of iBase are currently available supported with Analyst Notebook. So it's very important you consider whether upgrading to Analyst Notebook 10 is currently right for you and your organization. Once the software is installed, Analyst Notebook initially will start up with licensing uninitialized. This will be highlighted in red text on the splash screen that says activation required when starting up. 
Once startup has completed, you'll be shown the Activate i2 Analyst Notebook window, which allows you to select which of the activation methods you wish to use. Note at this release we've given you the option to click Activate Later at a more convenient time should you not be able to set up licensing immediately. This will allow continued use of the product without activation, but with a bar showing that you have not yet activated the product. You can then click on Activate within this bar at any time to then show the activation options window again. Note, however, that i2 reserves the right to change the ability to activate your software later at any time, and this option may not appear in future releases of the software. Let's have a look at all those options in detail now. First of all, there's a quick reminder here that both the license key method and the internet server method for activating Analyst Notebook require an internet connection in order to proceed, which will be shown in the UI. If you want to use a standalone license and currently have an active internet connection, licensing Analyst Notebook is as simple as taking the EID from the welcome email and entering it into the Enter a License Key field that appears when Analyst Notebook first starts. Analyst Notebook will then reach out to the I2EMS portal, and if you have enough seats in your entitlement remaining, that machine's unique characteristics will then be permanently tied to your entitlement in the portal. Once Analyst Notebook is activated in this way, it no longer requires an active internet connection to start. It's also possible to license your machine using a standalone license without having an active internet connection on the target machine. To do so, we should first click the Install a License File option within Analyst Notebook on the machine you wish to tie the license to. Doing so will then show you the instructions on how to activate Analyst Notebook. Importantly, it'll show you a box with something called a locking code in it. Copy this code and send it to whoever the administrator in your organisation for your licences is, as they will require this. This administrator then needs to visit the I2EMS portal on a machine that doesn't have internet access. As it is the first time we're looking at the portal, let's have a look at what that looks like now. Signing into the portal is easy and can be done in one of two ways. If you're not the administrator of your entitlement, i.e. you're not the original recipient of the welcome email, then you can simply take the EID which you've been sent and enter it into the EID field for the I2EMS portal. This will then allow you to activate licenses in different ways without needing to create a password protected account in the EMS portal. Note, however, that in order to use our internet licensing option, you will need to be an administrator of the account and create a login. For most circumstances, we would recommend an administrator creates an account. To create an account, you should use the email login on the portal and press the Forgot Password button, as by default, you won't have had a password generated for you. Enter the email address of the person who received the welcome email and press the button to email a Forgot Password link. This will then generate a password, which will be sent to that email address, allowing you to log in. Once logged in, you can also then change your password, which IT recommends once you've been issued with your initial password for increased security. When signed into the IT EMS portal, navigate to the Entitlements tab. Here you can see your organization's entitlements and the products which are associated with those entitlements. Press the Activate button to start the process of generating a standalone license. Once you've pressed the Activate button, you'll be taken to the Activate Products screen. Here we can see how many of our entitlements are currently in use and activated and how many we have left to activate. We want to select the standalone variant from the variant drop-down box. This then shows the locking criteria box. As you can see, the locking criteria for a standalone license is the disk ID. Don't worry, as the locking code, which was automatically provided to you for, by Analyst Notebook in the previous step, is already tied to the disk ID which is required here. Paste the code from the previous step into the box and press complete activation. This will then show you a screen which shows the details of the license file itself. Here we can either copy this string into a license file manually or simply select to download the license file from the EMS portal. Here we're going to select to download the license file. Simply save the file somewhere that can be accessed by the Analyst Notebook machine you generated the locking code from and then in Analyst Notebook select the Browse to License File button and point it at the LSERV-C file which you just downloaded from the portal. Then press activate. This copy of Analyst Notebook is now permanently tied to your entitlement. Now let's have a look at internet licensing. Generating an internet license can only be done after signing into the I2EMS portal as an administrator for your account. If you were the original recipient of the welcome email, you should be an administrator by default. You'll know whether or not you're an administrator when you log in, as you will not see the Sessions and Access Management tabs if you are not an administrator. To generate an internet license, 
First, we need to activate a license as an internet variant of that license, much like we did in the previous steps for standalone. First, we sign into the portal, we navigate to entitlements, and we select activate before picking the internet license variant from the list of options and selecting the quantity we wish to activate as an internet variant. Once we've done that, we have isolated some of our licenses to be available as internet licenses from now on. We now need to give access to those licenses to the end users via what is called a registration token. Switch to the access management tab and ensure you are on the registration tokens menu item. Click the add registration token button. As you can see, the registration tokens have an expiry date that must be selected. This date cannot be further than 30 days in the future. Select how many registration tokens you wish to generate and select an appropriate date and click save. This will then add a registration token to the list. Click the copy button next to the registration token which will copy it to your clipboard. You can then send this to the user that wishes to activate Analyst Notebook using the internet method. They then simply select, connect to an internet license server from the list of activation options, and in the resulting window, paste the registration token that you've provided them with into the box shown and press Activate Now. Analyst Notebook will then be activated for use against the Cloud I2EMS portal, and will check each time the Analyst Notebook starts that they have a license available to them to use. Note that license administrators can then edit this registration token from within the I2EMS portal in the future to increase the expiration date should it expire or delete the token completely should they need to remove access to the software. Remember that the token is just what is allowing the user to access the I2EMS. Even if that registration token expires after 30 days, existing end users who have already been configured to access the EMS portal will still be able to do so but any new users will have to either have that token renewed if they wish to use the same one, or have a new token generated. Finally, let's now have a look at the network licensing option. Creating your own local network licensing server is the most involved process for licensing Analyst Notebook, but it does give you the greatest flexibility over how you use your licenses. To start, you'll need a machine somewhere in your network that's always available and accessible by Analyst Notebook clients that wish to connect to that licensing server to activate. Once you've located a suitable server, you need to navigate to the installation media we were provided with when you purchased the software. Within the folder structure for Analyst Notebook, you'll find a folder named Entitlement Management. Copy this entire folder to the server. On that server, within the Entitlement Management folder, open the folder named Server and select the distribution which matches your server. Here we're showing the Windows distribution. Then double-click setup.exe to install the license server onto your system. If you're using Linux, please consult our online documentation for the steps you need to do in order to get a Linux-based license server running. Run through the installation wizard. Note that it's not usually necessary in most cases to install the Sentinel system drivers, and note that also the final option to unblock Sentinel in your firewall is highly advised. This will then install the Sentinel RMS License Manager onto the server. As a quick technical note here, network licenses communicate using UDP port 5093, so make sure that this is accessible from the end clients and from the licensing server. Once the installation is finished, you can check the server is installed and running by running services.msc and checking that you can find the Sentinel RMS License Manager service. You can then also optionally restart this service should something go wrong. Once the Sentinel RMS License Manager is installed on the server, this time navigate to the Utils folder and Admin Executable and run it. This will then show you the WLM Admin tool. Expanding subnet servers, you should also be able to see the server which you just set up. As you can see, currently we have no licenses applied to this server. To change this, we must first generate a network variant license in the I2EMS portal. As before, after signing in, navigate to Entitlements, select Activate, and then fill in the details for your license, such as the number of licenses you wish to activate and selecting the network variant. Before you continue, you'll see that, like when we were trying to activate a non-network attached standalone license, a locking code tied to the disk ID will be required in order to activate this license. 
It's important to note at this point that this locking code does not come from the machine you wish to license in this instance, but instead will now be a lock code which is specific to the licensing server itself. There are several different ways to get this lock code, but the most reliable way, and the way which i2 documents and recommends, is to navigate back to the utils directory we used before on the licensing server, and switch to your appropriate distribution. Here, again, we're using Windows. You should then keep going until you find the directory with the files echoid.exe and echoid.dat. Then, open a command prompt window with appropriate privileges, and change to the directory that contains the echoid executable. Note that it's important to change to this directory first before continuing. You cannot simply provide an absolute path to this executable or the output will be incorrect. Then, once switched to the directory, enter the command echo ID to call the executable. The lock code you'll then need to use will be displayed on the screen. You'll know if the lock code is correct or not if the output starts with a 4 minus. Note that you should not copy the 4 minus when copying your lock code. You can simply take the rest of the digits after this and copy them into your clipboard. If your lock code does not start with 4 minus, please contact the I2 support team for assistance. Take this lock code and then paste it back into the field within your EMS portal. The other way to get access to this lock code is actually from WLM admin itself, but this must be done on the licensed server. Within WLM admin, navigate to the machine fingerprint option. You can see that it then generates a lock code at the bottom of the screen. However, currently by default, this is being generated over multiple criteria. You should uncheck all options except for disk ID to generate a locking code at the bottom of the screen that can then be provided back to the I2EMS portal to generate a license file that can be used with this license server. Note that the option to use WLM admin will only be available in Windows deployments. As you can see, once you've provided the lock code and press the complete activation button, you can either copy the license string itself out to the window or save the license file to disk. Here we're going to save the license file to a disk. Now, back in WLM Admin, expand your subnet servers and select the server you wish to apply the license to. Select Add Feature, and in the resulting window, either paste in the license string from the I2EMS portal, or, as we're showing here, navigate to the license file we saved from the portal. Once you've selected the license file, it should then automatically be added to the license server and be visible underneath your subnet server entry. You've now added your licenses to the license server and it will be available to deliver licenses to any Analyst Notebook clients. However, we first need to get those Analyst Notebook clients to look for that license server. Back in I2Analyst Notebook, users need only to select the Connect to a License Server on your network button and then either press the Auto Discover button or, should Auto Discovery not be available, enter the name of the license server itself and press Activate Now. As long as this server is available to end users, Analyst Notebook will then check for a license from now on when starting up, and if it does find one, start. Note that when I2 Analyst Notebook is first activated with a network license, the activation success banner will be shown informing the end user that they can borrow licenses for periods when they'll be away from the network. Let's look at that now. Users can either press the open button in this banner, or if they have already dismissed the banner, they can also select from the file menu the option to navigate to license management to show the same window. To borrow a license, the end user simply presses the Borrow License button while still connected to the network. They then select how many days they wish to borrow this license for. And press Borrow. Analyst Notebook will then borrow the license and decrease the amount of available licenses to other users by one temporarily. The license management screen will show the user that they are borrowing a license and, if they should be reconnected to the network, are given the option to return this borrowed license early. It's important to exercise caution when using the borrowing license mechanic, as borrowed licenses can only be returned by users connected to the network. 
If a user no longer has access to that network, an admin cannot forcibly return a license early. If you're experiencing any issues with borrowed licenses, please contact the i2 support team. And that is licensing in i2 Analyst Notebook 10 in a nutshell. If you have any questions, please reach out to the i2 support team, who will do what they can to assist you further. And if you have further questions about the abilities of network licensing, for example reservation groups, please see our previous product access management details which explain how to set these up in detail. Thanks for listening.